when you listen to a good guitar player, it's as if he's pulling the whole song with him. But in reality, he's traveling with the song. He knows when the next curve is gonna come and his job is to enhance that. Wow, that's amazing, but we don't realize it's the setup. It's the setup for the surf. Magic is gonna happen, not on the fretboard, but in here. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Make sure you share and subscribe. Before we begin, make sure you get notified of other videos. And with that being said, here we go. Let's take the mystery out of how to switch major and minor pentatonics in your solo. Uh, this is a question I see a lot, I get a lot, I feel like it's not addressed um, in the manner in which I think it makes the most amount of sense. And so today we're going to just show you like how you are in charge of mixing uh, your major and minor pentatonic runs. It's gonna sound very classic rockish. If you do like Led Zeppelin, you can hear this in Jimmy Page's moves, uh, but you can make this stuff your own and you can incorporate it more and more as you practice this and kind of get it into your skin. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna play this over a rock one, four, and five. Uh, pretty much a D. It's gonna be D, G, and A. And I'll play it for you. A uh, little bit of, there's a little bit of like an A to a C, but I'll play you the backing track. It is pretty much a rock blues, uh, but you can do this stuff really in any genre, but we're just gonna study it over this easy palette. So let's check out the palette first, which is D. <laughs> Much of like a 12 bar blues but rock style and so let's just get right down to it all right so the trick to <laughs> to switching major and minor pentatonic is really easy it's just about either doing it on the chord change or right before the chord change there's an illusion that happens when you're focusing on the lead guitar lead guitarist excuse me we feel like and trust me i get it all the time even though like i really understand how music works when you listen to a good guitar player it's as if he's pulling the whole song with him but in reality he's traveling with the song he knows when the next curve is going to come and his job is to enhance that and so when we're going to talk first about right before a chord change so on this um, this backing track, I'm going to solo first with a D major pentatonic, and I'm going to uh, solo with this D major pentatonic. Five, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine. All right, this is kind of like the the major never lost pentatonic, and there's a video right here that kind of addresses it that you want to look at, and just very simply. And then I'm going to switch to a D major, excuse me, a D minor pentatonic right here on the 10th fret, the one we all know. And what I'm going to do is right before the chord change, right before it goes to the G, I'm going to switch from the D major to the D minor. It's the switch that we hear and we go, wow, that's amazing, but we don't realize it's the setup. It's the setup for the serve. And so check this out. Check out this effect that we get when you when you change right before chord change. <laughs> It's that easy, and there's many ways to do it. I'm gonna show you. And so, right before chord change, if you wanna hear a great example in pretty much the exact same footprint, check out the second guitar solo of The Song Remains the Same. Listen to Jimmy Page do this. He does it to a T, and it changes uh, the chord, boom, and he does the same exact moves. But let me show you other ways to do it. So, after we go from the D, and it goes to the G, I changed my, my D major pentatonic into a D minor. And when it lands on the G, I'm now in the D minor pentatonic. Well, how about let's change it back to a major before it goes back to the D. So that when I get back on the D, 
I'm back in a major pentatonic. Now, as this video progresses, you're gonna realize you can do this anytime you want. You can switch in and out, major or minor, and you, you can, sorry, you can practice with me so much on so many different types of backing tracks and so many ideas at patreon.com. You can check that out. I hate mentioning it for some reason, but it's really cool, and I'll stop talking. And so, let's listen to what it sounds like when I go from major to minor, stay in the minor, and then when the D is about to come back, I'll do a little bit of a major tease and then land back in the major pentatonic. It's really effective. <laughs> There was. Right? You can hear it. It was it was short. Then and right there, that's my D major pentatonic. And so I came in with the switch right before, like a beat or two, right before the chord change. Let's see if I can play it and say it at the same time. Something I have a hard time doing on these videos, which you probably know about. Here we go. Major. Minor. Same minor. You're using the upcoming chord change, kind of like, well, I was going to say kind of like the Watchmen in the Titanic, but they missed the call on the iceberg. <laughs> terrible. Terrible. But you, you want to, you know, look out for the chord changes and you want to, um, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to leave that in. Uh, you want to know the chord changes coming and say, okay, chord change straight ahead. Let's change to our minor pentatonic. This is the worst video I've ever made. Oh my gosh. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm going to do one more time before we get to the rest of the stuff. Okay, major. <laughs> On the next chord change, which is the A to the C to the G, I'm going to change back, I'm going to change before the chord change back to minor. And I'm going to stay in the minor all the way through that chord change, A, C to G, before we get back to the, before we get back to the D. I'm pretty much going to stay in the minor before I go 5, 4, back to the 1. I'll try and call it out, but again, you can mix and match these in any, any of these like fashions. You can start with major, you can start with minor. It's going to be fine. Reverse it. Uh, and uh, we'll talk more about, about another way to switch, but here we go. Let's see if I can say it out loud again. Major. takes the most amount of forethought and you can see when you're trying to say it out loud and do it it's a little bit harder but just you can always change to your major or minor depending on what you're doing right before your chord change another way to do it which is probably the easier easier one I should have started with is just do it on the chord change just change them on the chord changes and so let's see if you can spot it this is my major I'll do this one, the full one. and this is my minor all right let's Let's see if you can spot it. I'm just gonna do it on the chord changes.
was just literally changing them on the chord changes, just back and forth. So let's talk. This is, <laughs> hopefully, you know, I'm saying this is one of the easiest ways to learn it because it is. The more you do this, the more you either change major and minor pentatonics on a rock blues backing track, a 145 blues, either on the chord changes or right before the chord changes, magic is going to happen. Not on the fretboard, but in here. You're going to start to realize as you're playing different things, like you're going to have the taste buds to do it. You're going to have the watchtower chord change straight ahead. And you're going to be able to do this no matter what genre you're doing. Of course, you have to try it out beforehand a little bit just to make sure it works. But of course, I mean like in rehearsal, but to change major and minor pentatonics, just try to do it right before a chord change or on the chord change. It is that simple. You can do this for a blues, which is pretty much, you can do this for rock songs. If you want to practice this stuff uh, in, in different genres in the blues and different keys, come check me out on Patreon. I, that's it. I'm done with the worst video ever made. Uh, rock and roll. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you on another episode of Stitch Method. Bye-bye.